from before and it looks great okay now we read it <laughs> great welcome thank you all for being here um, hello everybody <laughs> Great, so today's our last meeting before we hand in the CFP notes that will be forming the CFP in January. So we're just gonna finalize it. Um, and the doc we're working off of is the one that's in the meeting invite. It's also the one that we were working off before. And right now that doc contains a lot of words because notes have been added to it essentially. And our main question for this evening or this today's meeting is do we want to do tracks or do we want to do bullet points for areas of focus for submissions and Victor's already given the feedback that he thinks that um, sort of the bullet points or areas of focus are a little bit better because if someone submits to a track and uh, then the tracks change which is always very possible depending on the submissions we get um, it, they might feel you know flummoxed that their track, the track that they thought they would be in was in fact, not the track they're gonna be in. But you all can give more opinions or, or agreement. We can just make a decision. Yeah, uh, uh, I think logic I, I would, me. The only thing what? I would add uh, there is that, I don't know whether we already have that to have some kind of for people to put tags so that it simplifies later on filtering and what's or not. To put tags, you know, when you it's typical when you submit, uh, uh, you can put tags like CD, uh, GitHub's, this or that. Yes. So what we um, have done actually is our two two options, track options. So we have um, either a track option or bullet point option. Or is um, it worth showing how CNCF presented, which is what we're looking to emulate? I think you've got the link there. Um, so this is for KubeCon uh, Europe that's coming up, and they do this pretty standard for, for um, KubeCon ones, our CNCF conferences. They will have you choose a topic, and it's this sort of idea that you, you sort of have sections, um, and we can have a sentence that explains them, but often their explanatory sentences have to do more with the projects in that space that they have, uh, which makes sense for uh, CNCF, given the size, the number of projects they have, but I think for Less so for the CDF because we have another section which lists out all the projects and we can go over that as well. So um, it's quite a nice format. Um, and, and it's also the other advantage is that it will be one that um, is familiar to people because off, you know, likely people have seen that before. Not everyone, but, but often. I think that works like why reinvent the wheel right as long as what Victor said they can make sure that there's tags, then we can really shape the conference not based on the tracks that we. Oh Laurie I think we you dropped. <laughs> You're frozen and silent for me at least. Yeah for yeah. me as well so should be back. Okay. But it is a good point, we can shape the tracks. Um, so here are a few suggested areas and this is a good list to add to and edit tonight if possible, or this, this meeting. Um, we have a 101. So again, surfacing that idea of having essentially a beginner track, but you know, we, just making it very clear, we want uh, talks that are addressing the inner space and, and sort of introducing topics, welcoming people into this ecosystem and, and all the knowledge they're in. And I think they're always well received. So that's great. Leadership uh, track or tag, um, community and culture. So a lot of this is reflected in the tracks we were considering before. Cloud native CD, GitOps, progressive delivery, best practices, MLOps, observability. Uh, Laura, you're back. I'll let you complete your thought from before. Oh, no, I was just agreeing with what Victor said, like to go kind of with this, which is very high level, and then uh, make sure that they can tag things. And then when we get all the submissions, we can kind of shape the content and shape the conference based on what we have. So it's not so um, typical and boring. It's just a little bit different based on what was submitted. Yes. Yes. I think that that's great. 
Um, to pick up on that, we also want some pretty wide ranging keynotes. We can discuss that more in a little bit. Go on. Can you please separate GitOps and progressive delivery? It freaks me out that that's not, that's very different. Yeah. <laughs> um, I don't know if you all are looking at the doc or I think it, actually they're all visible here. So that's okay. Are there any ones, is Jennifer, Jennifer S on the call? Because I, I wanna make sure that the area she was really interested in receiving talks in is well represented in this list as well. Uh, hi, yes, I am on the call. I'm just with the off camera. Um, yeah, I put performance and I put some, um, I put basically strategy, but I think there are things like the leadership part and best practices. It could be like, I, I think it would fit well, depending on the submission. So it sounds that it's covered, thanks. Now it looks like we need to, for example, from my view, leadership, community, culture, developer experience, productivity is like a bundle. And then you have GitOps, MLOps, but it's something more on the operational side. Security yes. policy and governance comes like another thing. So you drive people into more specific, uh, I will not call it tracks because we're trying to avoid tracks, but it also gives you the, the whole view of what you can expect in each bundle. Huh? Will people be able to like, it will, will this be an option uh, options that people can like tick more than one thing, right? Mm -hmm. I presume. Yeah. yeah I they don't tick really, if I understood right. They, these are the guidelines, what is more likely to be accepted topics than anything else, right? We don't have tracks, so they're not ticking or am I wrong? Okay, so I got them wrong. Jennifer Crowley, wrong, can yeah. you add? I, th I think you do have to choose something. I can tell who's who's done a KubeCon submission and who hasn't. Nobody here. <laughs> we probably all have and we don't remember. Yeah. <laughs> I have no idea. I've done Maybe. them for people and it's always confusing. I like, it could be this one, it could be this one. Yeah. Well, that's what I was going to say. With that long list of items, yes, you could have it set up so that people could click more than one when they're submitting, but eventually they're going to have to be put to form the schedule. You're going to have to have people put into one over another, like one's going to have to be at, at a higher level. Okay. And I mean, what, it, go on, Victor. In that case, I, I suggest we simplify our list because uh, there are quite a few items that I would be, I could imagine the same talk being in multiple simply because it's Maybe make it higher level, what we have. But another way to handle that is um, kind of kick that can down the road, actually, because here they say final tracks for the conference will be based on accepted submissions. So basically, right. we're, we're saying these are the areas we're interested in. Submit your talk. You can click either one or two, depending on how we want to set up that form. And Jennifer Crawley was the individual who can tell us more about that. But um, and then depending on the talks that we like and we definitely want in the conference, we can choose we can, we can then form our tracks, which gives us a little more work later down the line, but I not, not too much actually. I may have missed this. Did we say that this is a multiple choice or is this just a single choice? It can be multiple choice. If it's multiple, that kind of solves both pieces. It get, let, allows to put into multiple tracks, but then like Kara just mentioned is that it does say we will change the tracks depending on what gets selected. So it allows for people to say, hey, I think it fits in this, these three, and we say, well, no, we're just in, just in one, but it, it gives us that flexibility, but lets them kind of have that focus of where they feel it is, and then we can go from there. Right, I mean, it, that helps us with tagging too, potentially, right, yeah. later. So I, th yeah. I think we should keep it this way and then let them choose as many as they think it fits. And then we can, you know, cause it does help us with tagging. And if we have enough of a groupings of any of these, we can use them for tags. The one thing that um, I was looking down on the additional track proposals and Roxanne had put in analytics, monitoring, traceability and diagnostics. I feel like we need something around that. So people I've spoken with like say in the um, tracing or the event space, 
did did mention that they would put observability and and analytics maybe together. So we could do that, or if you have another way, if you want to formulate that. Yeah, I think it would be fine there if it was spelled out. I'm not 100% sure that people would directly put it there. I don't. Um, I don't know if everyone has always has the same um, interpretation of everything. So I think just spelling it out to include those pieces would probably work. Okay. But others might have better opinions. Yeah, just right. And analytics over there, and we should be fine. I had an action item from the last meeting um, for what it's worth um, to proposed descriptors of levels. Um, if you scroll down a little bit, this is a little bit different, but I just thought I'd mention that I did do it. Uh, oh, too far, up, up, too far, <laughs> right there. So I said potential descriptors of levels, like we had talked about having um, you know, different tracks. So I just put these here for what it's worth. They could be tags or things we use and people can bash at my sort of uh, descriptors. I love the use of the word foundational. I like that more than beginner. It felt more yeah. uh, welcoming. And I didn't know if we needed advanced and expert, but it kind of felt like we needed all if we had all of these because they weren't all. Anyway, so this is what I came up with. So I'm sure uh, they can be improved, but I just wanted to call them out because they could be used as, as uh, options on the form of submission of where, what they're relevant for. Yes. I like it, but... I this might be me only and doesn't apply to other people, but to me, more than three, it just confuses me, it confuses the hell out of me. I'm never sure. Mm -hmm. Intermediate or advanced or expert, I would really limit it to, let's say, three. Easy, medium, yeah. hard, foundational, advanced, expert, ninja, whatever. Kind of like... Advanced expert, yeah. Exactly. Uh, otherwise, it's too many choices. At least I, I honestly don't know what, what to take most of the time. What about, what about having a, a, so if we do either foundational or intermediate advanced expert, what if we added just a, another one that's general? Yeah, the all. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So that, because there, and that again gives a little bit of flexibility, but still allows us to, especially if we get 10 people that say that, hey, general, um, then we, you know, that we could see that could be a more broad top topic set. Um, that's just my. I think general part. is much better than all. I'm going to actually change that. Yeah. <laughs> so are they going to be allowed to click general and foundational? Like, because it's like kind of like a broader topic or are they only allowed to pick one? I would say like one. A, okay, but. So normally think? on the CFP, we have, and I do like foundational, that's nice. Um, foundational, intermediate, advanced, and then general, and they have to pick one of those. So you're saying you'd want them to be able to select two? I think one is fine. Just keep it at one. Yeah. Lori, what were you saying though? I may have cut you off, I'm sorry. No, it's fine. I just... Um, and I've never submitted to KubeCon before, so I didn't know the way that it was done, but it just seems like to me that, um, you know, I was on a red eye last night, so let's just, <laughs> I think you guys are right. <laughs> You're fine. So in terms of the difference between advanced or expert, do we wanna put those together? Or how do we, do we are we happy with one two three four five all in categories or yeah. do we want to? I would merge advanced and expert. Yeah. What do you think, Jennifer Hooper? I I debated. I included it for completeness. I was like, I kind of like the expert because in it. So I overthink everything just so you know, but I was thinking, well, maybe there's like kind of the future trends or things like that. And it could be like, you really needed to understand that. And that could be, you know, ninjas, maybe a better word, but I don't know that we need it. It's probably overkill um, to have, to have that plus advanced. I almost didn't include it at all, but I, I opted to. So I don't have a strong feeling on that one. 
Yeah, and, and just from past talks, uh, I'll say majority of folks will tick foundational or general, and you'll just get a handful in the other categories. So I think it's not worth spreading it out for advanced and expert. It's just, yeah, not really indistinguishable. It's not really distinguishable to most folks. So, yeah, so I think we can kill either one, whatever people think fits better or other word they want to use. Yeah, I would keep advanced, remove experts. I think that advanced is clearly above intermediate. Yeah, plus one. And for expert, you need to pay. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. That could be the differentiator. You want to pay us? Here you go. <laughs> bonus round speaking of of which um i discussed um jennifer was very good idea of doing pre-conference sort of open office sessions and one of the ways that we could approach it which would be um might work really well for us is doing the sessions actually as podcasts so we would have an expert in one area come on and then we would do that mm -hmm. social media call out and call out to our ecosystem of what questions would you like to ask as a beginner or do you think that a beginner should know and then we would do a podcast with them so i love that okay that great yeah. awesome I, uh, I shared some things with uh jackie and tracy about the podcast i used to run and like uh some topics that kind of seem to fit in that area. It was, uh, I created Codish over on the Heroku side and we had things like, um, I was there and it was like stories of, you know, outages or issues in production and people would come and talk about them. And it was, uh, it was really, really well received. So something like that could be um, not necessarily the same thing, but something like real stories, because that's what people want to hear. It's really good. Um, good. Yeah. The other thing leading up to this is, there's going to be a panel, Kara, I think you've been updated on this, but Tracy's gonna be on it. Um, I have DZone and um, a few other uh, companies and Kelsey Hightower is gonna moderate it with a, um, a session on, on CD trends, but ask, answering people's questions. And this I think is the first, is like a really good first step where we'll ask for people's questions. And then that would be the first event. Um, and then it can keep, asking for questions as we continue to move forward. Awesome, great. And when is that scheduled to be? Tracy, it's like the 20th, I forgot, I think the 26th, is that what I put it for? <laughs> I, uh, I think the 20th, um, 20th. It's the 20th, 20th of January. January. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, so Cara, I, I, I don't think I've flagged that to you, but Jennifer described it perfectly. And uh, yeah, the kind of, yeah, continuous learning theming. Um, we'll start to test that out and start to pull it through things. Great, great. I think that sounds fantastic. Yep. Yeah, it's the 20th at two o'clock Pacific. Okay, great. So, super progress. We have our levels, we have um, a sense of a one program to do in the run up, and we have our areas of focus. The last thing that would be great if we have a brainstorming, less immediate, um, doesn't need to get done this week, but it, it's nice if we start thinking forward to this, is who, what kind of keynotes we want? What kind of keynote speakers? I, I have some just ideas. I went with the obvious, like amazing hits. <laughs> and uh, Nicole Forsman, I always love her. And uh, Christy Wilson, Emily Freeman, you know. And then I, Put down some names um, and, and uh, Tracy suggested Anne Curry, which is a great suggestion. But you all are, are more than welcome to throw uh, more names down and we can discuss them more. Also, it might be fun to go really uh, a bit broader. And I know you discussed this a bit in the last meeting, but sort of really a little bit outside of the box. So kind of the space, space works well, that always goes over really well, but other sort of things like that. And I think the Anne Curry um, suggestion pulls it in that direction as well, because she's been doing a lot of great talks and keynotes on environmental impact of tech. And um, so it's kind of nice if we bring in more sort of wider issues into the keynotes. I think people really um, want that. I've also seen some really, really good um, um, keynote topics on the kind of mental health related issues. Like I've seen um, Simone Biles doing several of them. I've seen Trevor Noah doing several of them. 
I'm not saying we have to get one of them, but I've been, okay. there's been some really, really good conversations that have come out of those. And I think always, um, and honestly, from a personal belief perspective, I would love to do something about women's rights since we're going to be in Texas. Yeah. Just saying. Um, yeah. So something that ties that in, but without it being like, you know, offensively Absolutely. blatant. Absolutely. Something along the Jennifer Riggins article on diversity and open source and in tech in general, something like that might be very good. Or we could have a speaker who is running um, one of these uh, sort of outreach programs, either, you know, literally an outreach program like Outreachy or Black Girls Code or, you know, Women Who Code, something like that. That could be really great as mm -hmm. well. It would be so fun to have a speaker as well who would gone through these sort of programs, sort of a non-traditional path as a, I just want to say non-traditional person in tech, <laughs> but you know what I mean? Like a, yeah. Uh, yeah. And it would, it would be interesting to see their experience, how much it helped them. That would be lovely. Actually, that would be great too. So if you know anyone who fits that category, there are a number I can think of off the top of my head. I don't know if they'd be interested in keynoting, but that could be a great story as well. Like a really nice inspirational one. I also like the mental health keynote I think at this stage entering the third year of the pandemic or we're all about that we could also if we um if, if someone if we've had people in that category that weren't interested in keynoting maybe we could do a panel and get you know some diverse opinions on it that could be a a good thing as well yeah I do like your Simone Biles and Trevor Noah suggestions though. So if anybody's got their email address, please forward. <laughs> I attended a couple of them, maybe they'll know me. <laughs> I've been on a lot of things lately though. Both of them, I've seen their names all over the place. So I don't know what they're, I don't know what they're asking prices or what they're doing, but it certainly couldn't hurt to reach out. Yeah, I think the Open JavaScript Program Committee does um, some of that kind of outreach. So maybe we'll take those names to them and throw it in their pot and see if um, they can rustle up some contacts. Yeah, certainly couldn't hurt to try. Mm -hmm. Come get involved in tech. I'm sure it will go down well. <laughs> But it's interesting, there are there have been a number of, um, just looking on Twitter, tech Twitter, there have been a number of really um, very impressive uh, individuals in tech who have, for whatever reason of their own, taken some sabbatical time off during this pandemic. And I think, you know, maybe they could speak to their own experience a little bit. I don't know. Yeah, I think we can try to reach out to some of these people, you know, kind of out loud through our social channels. And we can also ask, you know, our audience to suggest people like that they might want to hear from. And that would also go a long way of probably more engagement. Yeah, I, I, I felt so. it was one that just came to mind. So I think Kara was mentioning the like um, black girls who code black, black tech, like so Paris Athena uh, started up. I think I think that's I think that's what the, their name is. Started up the Black Tech Pipeline, and it's become a huge community. And they are very active in that community, and I believe they've done a bunch of speaking as well. Um, we follow each other, but I've never spoken with them. <laughs> So, I mean, I, but I, I could certainly reach out or I know some people that I think know them. So, but that could be, that could be someone as well. Just, it came to mind now as I was thinking about what you had said a few minutes ago, Kara. That would be great. That would be really good reaching out. I'll reach out and see if I they do. might be interested. Jennifer S. Weiss, um, did you yeah, have to I... Well, I follow someone I, that I, uh, it's called Taylor Plondexter. I think she, uh, yeah, she had a sabbatical time like 
took some time off and now she's engineering manager at Spotify. Um, I found very, yeah, inspiring and like everything she was saying, like, and I am now going on a sabbatical as well. So like, just as an update, I, I left <laughs> VMware. <laughs> yeah. So like, uh, yeah, and I'm joining a new company in March, but yeah, so. <laughs> you, you doing keynotes in June? Yeah, I know. I'm like, no. <laughs> <laughs> I like, well, uh, congratulations. Thank you. <laughs> congrats on that one. Uh, Jerome Petazzoni, it's, uh, he was part of the team that built Docker. And back in 2018, 19, he dropped Docker because of a burnout situation and has to do with mental health. I think his story is really good, huh? how they almost die by success and how all that stress came up to his personal life. Huh? Oh, yeah. Yeah, add him there. Do you want to add his name? I'm not sure I know how to spell it. And of these I put it on, on the chat. I have good okay. relations with him, so I can reach out. Oh, I can't see it right now. Okay, great. Did it. Thank you. Okay, and any other sort of a little bit out of the box spaces you would like talked about in the keynotes, something? inspiring or helpful or just also just fun well, there well, are some, the, go ahead. Yeah, i was going to say some of the futurist speakers there are some guys that are focused on how the future looks like with all the innovation there are a couple of folks that are really really good on exciting people huh? i'll find the, the names huh? there's a greek guy and a u.s guy So there are futurist talks as check in general, or is it AI based, or is it the whole thing, Web3, Bitcoin? Well, well we have uh, the Greek one is very specific on cryptocurrencies and how deploy infrastructure and stuff like that. And there's hmm. another one that it's more on, on a broader site. I'll, find, I'll share the names, I'll find the, those guys now. Huh? Okay, great, thank you. So I was looking at um, a conference that I used to work. It's, it was an Oracle conference, but they had this uh, comedian, his name is Don McMillan. And he, um, he, has, uh, he graduated from Stanford with a master's in electrical engineering. And he's funny, like, because he relates everything back to tech topics, you know, like, so he just needs like, um, I don't know, we thought he was hilarious uh, and, um, he might be someone, I don't know how much he costs, but it was definitely like a fun way to kind of start the day, um, you know, with a bowl of laughs. Agree with that. I think um, I think it would be really fun if we could have a good comedian who, who is relevant to the space too. That's kind of excellent. If you know his name, that would be great. I'll put the link in the um, Slack or in the chat. Yeah, the parenting issue during the pandemic has been rough for people, for sure. Yeah. Well, I think having, uh, we, you know, had someone who took a sabbatical, but also having someone who kind of broke the traditional norms and as a male, we decided to stay home to be a father. Um, well, you know, the life is worth looking at something. Um, oops. <laughs> no, I know someone who just oh, announced on Twitter, you. he's the greatest guy too. Um, he was, a, he was a mentor of mine way back in the day and he's, he's lovely. He's having his third child and he just tweeted, I'm so excited my company introduced a, a, you know, a paternity leave and I thought, well, that's nice of them. I don't think it will be for me because I already have two and now he's having his third and he's like, I'm so excited I get to take it. So that's maybe him. Maybe, maybe, maybe. But yeah. Okay, cool. Yeah, I, think, uh, I think anything we can do to focus on kind of like busting the gender norms is a good thing. Dads in tech panel. <laughs> <laughs> stay at home dad's final <laughs> well it could be like stay at, at a stay at home dad but someone also who's taking time off for another reason or i mean it could be a panel of a variety of people like to get um 
Yeah. Yeah. I think a wide range of experiences and points of view and different, different ways of, I mean, really approaching one's relationship to tech, but also during the pandemic. And that, that would be really nice. I agree. And out there things, you think we can get a Boston Dynamics dancing robot to come onto the stage <laughs> or just hang around at the expo hall? I, I would love that. I know, I was thinking we should get someone to talk about um, ML ops and, and ethics around, because there's a lot that can be done with um, data and, and in your data pipelines and, and sort of improving some of that. So I, I do think it's a good way to bring in that ethical component and address it. Um, I don't know if they'd be yeah, a fit, but, but I, I had, I interviewed somebody or I had somebody interviewed for uh, the Codish podcast all about um, AI and ethics. Um, so they might, if we want to go that direction, I can look them up and see it and send you the link and see if you think it's a fit. Okay, great. Thank you. For Boston Dynamics and Misty Robotics, I can try to get some of the robots. In robots to see the art, totally. That whole question around like ML ops is such a, you know, it's such an open space in many ways. I think people are really trying to formulate best practices and there's various levels of implementation in the wild. And, you know, people who are doing it really well as, as um, is it Boston Dynamics? So they probably are certainly very good at their PR. <laughs> very exciting company. So I, I, uh, I would be all for it if they have a good talk in that space, that would be amazing. And it would be really fun to have one of their robots as well, if they wanted. <laughs> I just put the, uh, I did a two part. One was more on the technical side, but this was the ethical side. So um, may or may not make sense, but it's there for you. Okay. If it seems like uh, he'd be good, I'm happy to reach out. Is it in the chat? Is that where it is? I can't see the chat right uh, now. But yeah, sorry. Yeah, I put it in okay. the chat. I can put That's it good. here. Thank you. Um, let's see. Is it? I'm an anonymous pumpkin, by the way. <laughs> And um, other other environment talks or other you know anything medical space robotics all the fun things vaccine um, anyone has proper talk on the vaccine development and accelerating that hmm. um, I, I think that could be a nice tie in with how we're all looking to just get faster at what we do in Texas. <laughs> all the more, all the more. Okay, <laughs> so much sweeter. <laughs> depends, depends whether we have a uh, budget for security, right? <laughs> How quickly can we get thrown out of Texas? <laughs> uh, one, one thought, which I don't exactly know how it would play out, but um, one of the big things that's come out of some of the reports lately is, and it's something I believe in a lot, is like how critical documentation is. I wonder if there's something we could talk about related to documentation in an interesting way yeah has to be kind of fun somehow I mean this is maybe not fun but um <laughs> certainly in terms of you can have like you know policy in your pipelines for uh docu checking documentation I mean it, mm -hmm. it might be a little bit of a fuzzy check but you know you can put things so that that could that's an easy thing to tie in and saying like your know, best practices could be part of that have your documentation and having that checked in your pipeline so Definitely. That's not the most fun, fun comment, but um, I think. No, but if you go through, if, if you found somebody fun, like if one of these comedian type people could talk about like how documentation ties into each of these pieces in a comedic way, that could be like a really cool talk. Yeah. I don't That should be docs as code, huh? 
Yeah. Yeah, that's just, there you go. Mm -hmm. I was thinking on, you know, that uh, spot that someone is talking and how people connect on Zoom and hello, hello, and people is calling and suddenly you hear the dog barking, but it's a funny speech. I was thinking something similar from a dog's perspective, not that you're updating things and someone makes a pull request and it automatically updates and you're mixing and messing things. That could be a good one. That could be a good one. Have you seen the... Um... The one talking about the importance of good documentation where someone's trying to make a peanut butter and jelly sandwich following the instructions. It's kind of the same concept you're talking about, oh. but they, you know, they end up with like the peanut butter and jelly sandwich being totally not because it wasn't described well. You think it is, but it's not. But there could be something to play with what you were just saying with kind of that topic to make it fun. Yeah, there was a topic at uh, um Monktoberfest a couple of years ago that was so and it, I think they actually have, I forget who gave it but they I think they gave it at other conferences too but of like how to fold a fitted sheet and that was the whole talk and it was it was it was great it was hilarious but it was very um very deep as well like it it just was it was really interesting um, so yeah those those types of talks are always great yeah. So completely like out of left field, but you said that and it reminded me, I used to, um, I got to work with, uh, the guy, the ventriloquist, um, Jay Johnson. He is best known for, um, being on the seventies TV show soap, um, where he played a brother that had a ventriloquist dummy, but he thought he was a real person. Anyway, he does a Broadway show and he won a Tony for it called Jay Johnson and the Two and Only. And within it, he talks about how he has dyslexia and there's this whole like, you know, five or 10 minute piece. And, you know, he's using, he's either using his puppet um, or his dummy or uh, a dry erase board. And he's like writing backwards and it's a little bit of magic, you know, and then it, all of a sudden you can kind of read what he's saying. But um, I don't know. It, it's he's funny but he's also um very relatable in that whole idea of reaching for the stars like we took him to um we took him to like a boys and girls club and he gave them all uh tennis balls and had them create their first puppet with a tennis ball or with a sock I don't know something like that where it's just kind of like it touches you in a different way and it just shows that you know we are all human and connected and it doesn't matter that we work in tech and virtual zoom meetings all day um but there's still like a core essence of all of us he's an interesting cat i love that the uh not to uh keep showing things i've done before but um like at heroku like create yeah you're not even gonna be able to see it um <laughs> i created a a um because we did a bunch of things i wanted people to really understand the importance of of um of you know, people with different abilities. So we created something that um, you would use on a regular basis, but you would notice it by feeling instead of, so it would just start to learn. So we created, um, I created water bottles with Braille. So this says Heroku in Braille, and this is raised. But I mean, if we did something like, um, and then we had a little card that went with it that was Braille also and, and had a really nice quote in it. Um, but in, in English and in Braille. But if we did something like an accessibility type keynote, we could also give away something that kind of reinforces it. I like that ventriloquism slash accessibility theme slash, yeah, actual swag that fits in. Nice. Yep. And I yeah. And I, go on. I, I was just gonna say, I added Julia Ferrioli, um, who also gave a talk at uh, very open source stuff, um, but also gave a talk um, at Monktoberfest around disability and accessibility and diversity and how all of those play together as you're developing. Um, it was the only talk I've cried at in like years. It was phenomenal. 
um, that she would also be a, a really uh, a good if you know if we want to go that direction of you know accessibility and diversity and in that like I could not endorse that talk enough. Okay, that's a strong recommendation. That's fantastic. Yeah, there is also I've forgotten his name unfortunately, but um, there's a developer in the UK and I think he works at the FT who is deaf. And he spoke at, let's borrow the Monkfest speakers, but he spoke at Monkfest, it was a great talk. Um, and he was just then talking about the importance of thinking about accessibility. And he was giving examples in the real world and how small changes in the real world for supposedly like a niche group actually benefit everyone. It was a great talk. Um, but now he started a new project, which is, he might be interested in giving a keynote on again, where actually he is uh, bringing tech words into sign language. So he's making a sign language for tech words. And he's working with, uh, I think, a, a known sign language body. I, I don't have the details on it. But that I, could be really, and maybe that could tie into documentation. And it could be like a whole kind of cool thing where you're, um, there could be something cool there. Yeah. Is right, so that Ben Fletcher? Yes, that is who it is. Yep. Thank you, Tracy. Yep. Let's go. And do we have noted down? I did like this idea very much on um, anything in health, vaccines, rapid delivery. I think we've all learned the importance of rapid response being very quickly, like in, in the most real world way you possibly could. So it would be um, maybe, maybe uh, nice to have that sort of talk. I actually know someone who's a geneticist. He's running the head, the genetics department, um, I think at University College London. Maybe it's, maybe it's King's, I think it's University College London, but he, he's, um, I know him pretty well. And he's, he's in the news all the time now giving opinions, but he's giving, he does, well, he does statistical analysis on, on genetics, but also on, um, Exactly this, viral transfers and, and how diseases spread. So he's in the news a lot now, but that might be someone, you know, ping him and ask him. And okay. I don't know if he could structure it well for us or, well, you, you all tell me, um, if someone comes in and talks about what they do, but it's not DevOps, I mean, how, how wide ranging do we, Simone Biles obviously wouldn't be, but that's okay. <laughs> but um, how wide ranging do we really wanna go? I think as long as it ties to, you know, some inspirational takeaway, uh, I, I think it's great to get people out of their bubble. Okay, I like that too. Yep. Um, one other, sorry, I keep putting podcasts here, but it's like making me think of people, but um, there's this company that I really, really love. Um, I was able to sponsor them and do a few things with them. They're called uh, Driven Data. And what they do is they are a, they try to solve so social platforms, uh, sorry, they try to solve social problems through code. And so what they do is they do a bunch of like, um, you know, hackathons, community stuff, all sorts of stuff to solve different problems. And I love what they do. Um, so that could be, I'm not sure if it's completely that, I don't think, I don't know that it's the best choice, but I found it fascinating to me. So throwing it there too. Yeah, yeah, I like that. Um, Data kind in the UK seems to be doing something similar, and they I've I've done hackathons with them, and they're just such a good organization, and they're based in the US as well. I think they're in a number of places in the world. Yeah. And the name of the group you were mentioning, Jennifer. Driven data. Okay. I'm looking to see if they're doing anything. Um, oh, they they're doing one that they're. Um, uh, doing predicting disease spread. They have a, they have a competition on that right now. Okay. And they have one about data mining the water table. They have a flu shot predict um, flu vaccine. So 
they could be um, interesting in that area. I'll put yeah. that next to it. Um, but yeah, I have a good relationship with them because I work with them pretty closely on a few things. So yeah. happy to reach out if that is of use. Yeah, that I got. Thank you. Yeah, solving social problems with data science. Yes, please. More of that. Oh, did we put down the um, um, Boston Analytics? And Jeremy, you have that on there, and you you have contacts. Is that right? Uh, Guillermo. Yeah. Oh, okay, okay, great. Uh, Boston Dynamics. Oh, Dynamics. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah, that would be really fun. <clears throat> oh, maybe I'll talk to you on something um, on the edge. Robots, maybe a little bit, but, but uh beyond that as well. Can we think of anything fun in that space? <laughs> or anything else too. We have a few minutes left, so throw out all your crazy ideas. Okay. Well, we presented because at Oracle, we are running the developer programs for Red Bull and we create an augmented reality simulator. So you play on Xbox and PlayStation with a Formula One game and we take all the telemetry of the game, we put it in the cloud and we replicate the same labs in an augmented reality circuit. So you see like a Lego car going around there. We are running now a second stage that is how you apply machine learning on top of that to improve the labs. So we call it Rodi project. Uh, people has been quite impressed. We presented that in Austin a few months ago with one of the Formula One races. And looks like people was like, shit, this is cool. We can put people with Oculus glasses and stuff like that and seeing that you are playing here and suddenly you see the replica of your game in an augmented reality. Yeah, that's very cool. Do you want to add it to the doc? Sure. Thank you. That's yeah. great. I like that, especially if we can give people augmented reality glasses. Remember when those cardboards were out and those were great. That was a really cheap way to get augmented reality or VR, I guess. And if we did something like that, I don't know if it's possible, but maybe there'd be a place at the event that people could go play it, like at the CDF booth or something. So it'd be kind of fun. You have the keynote and then, you know, it'll drive people to the CDF booth. Yeah. Uh, when I build my own startup, 
we used to go to because it was based on the elastic uh, suite of products. We used to put a gaming machine around Street Fighter. There's one version uh -huh. they have all the moves coded in memory. So we were having a big screen as people was playing. We were getting statistics of average of the forecasting of how you can win or lose, but also magic tricks, defense and stuff like that. People was like, shit, I'm playing and I'm just seeing statistics here of how can I win or lose. And it was so shocking for, for people playing. Huh? Do you have any links to that stuff? It sounds kind of cool. Yeah, we have for this, well, for the simulator, we can even do a demo and show up what we've done. And I will look if I can, because this is in Austin, you know, the CD mm -hmm. to see if I can ship, because we were planning to buy uh, Formula One gaming seats, and I wanted to have in different regions, so I don't need to ship from Europe to US because it's quite expensive. Yeah. We'll see if internally we can, I can place one in our new headquarters in Austin. So nice. then I <laughs> just bring it along yeah steal it and put it there I like it it'd be fun if we can do anything custom in the in the world customize it to yeah. C CD con or put some theming around it that could be pretty cool Great. that has been super productive um we've got four minutes left so but thank you i feel like this is coming together well we're ready to basically hand this and the keynotes will work on a little bit more um in, in the new year <laughs> and start really trying to pull in keynote speakers um but any any other keynote ideas you have or, or other things you want to add this is a good moment. i think not keynote but maybe just checking in with folks when the next meeting would be when when are folks available i don't know if we've got it on the calendar i took out the ones i hope um i hope you all saw that i took out the okay. ones <laughs> i'm looking at my calendar that's fine um <laughs> i took out the ones over christmas because of course we don't want to do okay. that. There isn't one on the 4th, so the one will be on the 11th, which is the day after the CFP opens. Okay. Yeah. 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 So if January 11th works for everybody, I think that's good. We can just take a break now and come back then. I am hosting an online event at that time with AWS, so I won't be there, but I can follow up with anything off async. I'll be also, I'm going to Brazil, so I'll be flying for a few cities around that week um but i'll come i'll be able to come from the following the first two weeks of january won't be i won't be available that's it rather change uh trade things to do with you <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, tell us more about friend. the sabbatical it's sounding awesome <laughs> good um but yeah i think for that meeting i expect uh We'll just making sure everyone has access to the platform and they can see the reviews and they can uh, they're in a good position to start reviewing and qualifying things um, as as things start to trickle in. Excellent, great. Um, so we will see you all on the eleventh. In the meantime, please have wonderful holidays and. Jennifer, have an amazing sabbatical. Yes. <laughs> we expect to hear stories in your back. <laughs> and pictures. Pictures are always good. Thanks. Thanks. Yeah, it's seeing the family and the, a bit of traveling, but seeing the family as well, helping take care of family member, like lots of things. That, like it, it's a good opportunity to do lots of things. <laughs> and yeah, and clear the mind as well, because yeah, it's been a really difficult year. <laughs> Thank you very much fun happy holidays everybody happy new year ish hey tracy and Karen, do you have like one second we can talk about that event on the 20th yes i can stand um happy holidays, I, Bye. Um, do you need anything else for me to get it posted i'd like to get it um posted so that we can start to promote it before the holidays yeah I let that, me um, take a look so in the email you had sent me a title is that right uh, feel free to modify it however you like i'm, I'm not okay I, yeah i think that was good i'm meeting hold for the cdf panel um just 
Right. And Robert a candid conversation. Robert yeah. from Salesforce can't get it approved until it's posted and he can share that with his team. So I need to get it also posted for that reason. And I okay. have a request out to the D zone guy for his um, bio, but yeah. I don't have that yet. So, so I'm thinking can... with Roxanne tomorrow and she she'll she can be pretty quick. So I'll ask her to um, just knock that together and we'll go with the headshots of people we have and we can always add more in as they come in. So okay. how about we, we'll get that drafted this week, um, send it to you and uh, Cara so you can see what that looks like and get any feedback and iterate and then we can start the promotion. Um, end of this yeah, week. we wanted to promote it. Um, Kelsey loved the idea of the continuous learning and really wanted to tie this into that, which I thought was a great idea. So I was all for that too. And I thought we could start so, with like asking people for like what their questions were that they wanted to hear. And then if we arm mm -hmm. Kelsey and the panel with, he said like maybe eight questions, then yeah. he can fend off any additional ones, but that'll at least be a really good place to start. Okay, so yeah, as we do the promotion, it's almost a call to action of what yeah. would you like to ask folks? What would you like yeah. to learn? And that could be nice. like the ongoing um, drum roll. I'm just making, I'm just moving yeah. on this and you guys aren't saying no, so. That's no, I think that. it's good. I think <laughs> let's, let's toss it out there. Let's see the response. Uh, I think this could be a nice theme to, to keep going with. Yeah, so um, I'll do that uh, with Roxanne tomorrow and we should, you should hear back from us. Awesome. I will week. go push and see if I can get the D-Zone guys stuff. Um, and then as soon as it's there or, or there's a preview I can share, I'll send it to, uh, Robert to get his, hopefully we'll get his approval before the break. Um, but the D-Zone guy, I think is, is slightly more important than Robert just to start with and we can add him afterwards. Note. All right, great. Thank you so much for getting that awesome. uh, all in good state. Oh, Finally, forever. <laughs> Thanks, all right, bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.